Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Podlogical, a Simply Neological podcast. We're back home again from Raleigh. <laughs> Raleigh? We got back. We're back from Raleigh, we, North Carolina. We slayed all day in Raleigh. What's the state motto of Raleigh? We have loud trains and barbecue. And Sophia and Tyler. That's, that's, <laughs> that's their what state. It when you drive into North Carolina. Yeah. Home of Sophia and Tyler. Basically. And Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah, and okay, so we're but... back from North Carolina. We uh, we uh, had we, some barbecue. And, we launched And the... we launched a nail polish yeah. collection. <laughs> which... he, he led with we had barbecue. <laughs> we had but, some fried okay. chicken. It was yes. good. And we launched the Hollow Taco X Sophia collab, which was super fun. You guys have probably seen her video by now, the truck event that we yeah. did like several months ago. But yeah, now that's out. And then we did a live stream launching the collab and it was, it was all like a whirlwind. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it's always like this, but with a collaborator and like a much bigger deal and we were traveling for it a couple times, like Mm -hmm. she'd come here, we'd gone there twice. There was a lot of work leading up to it. And then when that was like over, it's like, wait, what happened? What happened? We lo- what it's done yeah. yeah so we've missed a few weeks of uploading the podcast and mm-hmm. yeah the even the week after the launch has been a bit of a like what just happened feeling i agree there's a bit of an adrenaline dump or something that happens after these yeah big releases we find with hollow taco but uh, it was so great to work with saf though and tyler mm-hmm. and her team but you know shout out to saf my bat bestie and the <laughs> the collection sold like too well very well um very well but we had good amounts of the box it lasted 25 hours so i am proud that it that it lasted 25 hours and not like 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so i think that's wonderful um for at least everyone in every time zone to have a chance we are working on a small restock of the individual, individual. shades and the nail file which unfortunately had sold out earlier during the live stream um, so yeah, that was a, a bit of a, we, we kind of anticipated that could happen. We were a little bit short on them, but we are going to restock them in small amounts. So yes, if you missed the Sophia collection, they're all going to come back and stock individually, not the collection box. The collection box is done. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't have a date yet, but if you mm-hmm. hit notify me on our website on the individual shade or nail file and enter your email, then you'll be first to know when we get that automated email sent out when they are put back into inventory. Yeah. We're probably talking early October. Yeah. I think we could say that. Okay. I was going to like not say a date, but okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. <laughs> we don't have a confirmed date yet internally, but Ben's, okay. We don't know. What we don't, yeah. We don't know. We're still working on it. Uh, ask me something. Today we're doing Ask Me Something. <laughs> ask Me Anything, not Ask Me Something. Who's yeah. ever said Ask Me Something? Gotta put a little spin on it. I'm trying to re- refresh, rebrand. Ask Me Something. Okay, got it. Is that what we're titling the <laughs> right, podcast? All right, first Ask Me Something. At what age did you stop getting taller, Christine? <laughs> do you remember? Uh, did you do, do you the remember? thing? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you do the thing in the doorway, like you and your sister? No. You'd like... Uh, you draw on the on the doorway how tall you were no that not wasn't that I a thing remember. i mean maybe when i was young younger but like not when i was old enough to have remembered those things would you date me if i was under six feet tall i mean i'm under six feet tall i feel like that wouldn't be fair <laughs> <laughs> that's what <laughs> wait why did what? that's how you think about it well yeah like <laughs> If you were shorter than me, then maybe like oh, is that the t- you have to be okay. at least my height. <laughs> that is a more reasonable, yeah. If there's less of a discrepancy between a wait, are you saying you wouldn't date me if I was shorter than you? Well, it's I not like a rule. True but... love transcends height limits. This isn't a roller coaster it's probably ride, like right? Very uncommon. Like, what proportion of men are or under five, five foot four? Three. Yeah, probably not many. Not that many. But so well, what if like what if I not... was? I'm not just Okay, any but man. you're not. Like, I don't know. This is so stupid. <laughs> Would so you date a... me if I was six foot how tall are you? Six I, feet. Love has no height. What if I was taller than limit. you? What if I was a supermodel? 
obviously. That would be awful for me. <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> Shut up. I would be so upset. Okay, you didn't answer the question. At what age did I stop getting yeah. taller? So I've been 5'11 since I was like... Uh, You're not six feet? So Okay, so here's... I thought the... there was no such thing as being 5'11. Like you're always okay. six feet. Okay, help me come to an answer here. I, <laughs> I, was, I got a fi- annual physical or something recently. Okay. And I got measured and it's... I'm 5'11 and like a half inch. So am I just one of the few people who just is truly 5'11 and says that? Do you remember Do what, you, what your round... height was 10 years ago? Like, what did you think you were About this whole the time? same. I've always felt, I've always been like a little bit over 5'11. So I'm between okay. 5'11 and six feet. But no one says that, right? Most guys will just say I'm six feet. But it's not just like for bragging rights. It's for, it's like literally math. Like you always round up. That's just common. Yeah, but I feel like a bit of a fraud if I say I'm six feet, right? I'm just get that's like stolen, uh, stolen valor. What kind of perks do you get for saying you're six feet that you wouldn't get if you said you're five foot 11 and a half? Like, uh, I don't know. Wh- what are you afforded? I, I think <laughs> a lot of women care about this, don't they? They just look at your height. Is that just what people <laughs> think women think? That like, there's like a, I need a guy who's six feet tall sort of thing. I mean, I think that's pretty dumb to look at it like that. I think more people would just look at someone and eyeball like, oh, yeah, they're tallish. You know what I mean? Rather than like specifically yeah. give me the tiny increments. I don't know. I don't think anyone actually does that. When did you? So when did you stop growing? This is hard to remember. I was definitely a teenager, though. I feel like I was 13, 14, and that's probably when I hit 5'4". Does that make sense? You stopped growing at 13? Yeah. That probably doesn't make sense. Really? Yeah. Did you drink coffee? Yeah. Did you smoke cigarettes? Tiny bit. <laughs> when I was a teenager. Wait, not when I was 13. <laughs> Wait, I'm like, Christine's okay. 13, just God, smoking God, away. I'm, you tried smoking one you know, time that was, as a that teenager. That was like 20 years ago. I don't remember. Um, damn. What a rebel. No, I didn't I, drink coffee Wait, as a when teenager. did I stop growing? I guess it makes more sense to be like 16, right? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm talking shit. Don't listen to me. Okay. Next, ask high me school. something. High school. I All definitely right. like hit five four in high school and then never grew again. <laughs> ask me something else. Would Ben dump Christine for Taylor Swift? She is almost six feet. She's too tall. What? Couldn't I couldn't date her. She's too tall for me. So you wouldn't date a supermodel. <laughs> well, I I wouldn't Spot date. Spot the contradiction. <laughs> the, the premise of the question is funny because it puts me in a position of like acting like I could date Taylor Swift. Yeah, right. But like, I don't want a bunch of songs written about me. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck mm-hmm. that. Okay. Would I would entertain like a? I'd like to meet you. <laughs> Excuse me. The Owl City song. Or what is oh. it? <laughs> I'd like to meet you. Or I was whatever. enchanted. I yeah, was enchanted, oh, I was enchanted to, meet, to you. meet you. So you could write her songs back. Yeah, that would go over well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't. Unless, like, you were, like, would you dump me for Taylor Swift? No. You had to think about that a little bit. <laughs> no, I didn't. Like, no. <laughs> we could have, uh, like, a thruple situation. No. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Next one. Uh, what is your take on Oprah thinking the the reason Americans are unhappy? Americans are unhappy oh. because they... Love are bread. Allergic to cats. They. I love bread. <laughs> I can't get the Oprah's out of my. That's like a meme from like 15 years ago, where it was just Oprah going, "I love bread," <laughs> like really enthusiastically many I think times. It was a Weight Watchers commercial. Was that from what like it was? And twelve. I don't, it's just like burned ago. into my brain. <laughs> I mean, because there's a there, there's something true about, about it. loving bread. There's something like deeply meaningfully true about that statement. Okay. I didn't uh, think it was that deep. I just thought it was a funny line to repeat, but oh, got I, it. I just love bread. Okay. Um, Oprah thinks Americans are unhappy. I, I guess I had to look into this yeah. a bit when Can we saw this Can you provide context? Question. It's not the I love bread meme. So I think something is kind of going viral on TikTok. This, she did some interview. Oprah recently wrote a book with a professor who studies happiness. Um, and I guess they were doing an interview with like ABC or something about the book. And some clip went viral of her... Uh, giving a, at least a partial answer that one reason people are unhappy is uh, social media because envy is the, the like antithesis of happiness or the killer of happiness. Or mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact uh, phrase she used. But I think more broadly, this book is about 
I don't know, just what is the key to happiness? And it's coming from the perspective of a lot of people, I think, have this idea in their mind that if you hit certain material targets in your life, that is mm-hmm. the way to achieve happiness. Like, uh, once I have that nice house, I'll be happy. Or once I lose a certain amount of weight, I'll be happy. Or if I have a certain amount of money, I'll be happy. Mm-hmm. And I think a big part of their thesis is rejecting uh, that way of looking at life. But predictably, I think a lot of people heard this clip of her saying like, oh, the reason why so many Americans aren't happy is they just see rich people online has made a lot of people have a pretty severe reaction of like, maybe we're unhappy because we don't have money and you're Oprah and you have (laughs) hundreds of millions of dollars and uh, you're out of touch with how most people live their life. Okay. I think that's the context I'm aware of, of the clip. Mm -hmm. Uh Who's right? Oprah? Or TikTok. I think when you look at that clip in isolation, then yes, it does. I can understand how people would read it in the way that it looks like Oprah is just calling out social media and maybe like beauty or money standards as a reason to make people envious and therefore unhappy. Um, And maybe some of that, like there's truth to that. Like in isolation, we could probably agree that's scrolling through social media, even if we're talking about like self-esteem issues on social media, that seeing all this shit like makes us feel worse. Seems pretty uncontroversial. That that is supported by literature amongst youth all the time, especially young women. Mm -hmm. Um, So like there's truth to that, but people were reading her statement as having an additional meaning that it was lacking in acknowledging that people in America who aren't her or in her echelon of wealth are unhappy for way more tangential reasons that are related to like not having money (laughs) or the ability to meet rent. And if they had those uh, basic conditions met, then they would be in a position where they might be able to experience just a more even Uh, average standard of happiness like not like oh we're fucking amazing you know but just like have the basic needs met Mm -hmm. that could at least allow someone to contemplate what it would be like like to entertain happiness because i guess what people are saying is like there's no way to even get there when we're stuck so far at the bottom so oprah's not even thinking about this therefore she's out of touch because she's so rich she doesn't have to think about the fact that that is a possibility for why Americans mm-hmm. or that they said Americans was the question, but it's not just Americans um, are struggling. So I understand the the lashing. I think out at her that. answer makes sense for a certain demographic of people who aren't just worried about money, who aren't worried about like their material conditions in a more fundamental way. Right. And that's kind of to mm-hmm. me, that's always been my perception of oprah and her uh her shtick and appeal to people she's not talking to like working class people as much as it's people that live in a certain degree of comfort but maybe still don't have happiness Is that, and like i don't know if that was always true well she used to have just like a really trashy like jerry springer style show so i guess that was a little more uh i don't, uh, I, don't know. I don't know if i agree with that either but like I'm kind of trying well, to remember what my that's not an opinion thing. Impression. Her show used to be really trashy. Well, is that yeah. an, not an opinion? I don't know. I think that's I think an pretty. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I remember like as a young kid thinking that Oprah was the not the trashy ones where there was like Maury and like who's your daddy type stuff like yeah, those no, she, were she grew more, into yeah. something different she was more mature not to say that a lot of reality talk shows back then were if we look at them today we would absolutely say that how trashy but for the time i feel like she wasn't in that yeah, but category. she would bring on charlatans like Dr. Phil and yeah, Dr. Oz true. or... And today pro- we would think that's she would trashy, promote, she but would, we didn't back then. Yeah. It was less trashy than Jerry Springer having, sure. you know, white people, like trailer, people who live in trailer parks fighting each other on television. I'm not trying to put her in that category. Uh, yeah. But she would like, remember when she, she promoted like the book, like The Secret. Do you remember that? I think she was part of like mm-hmm. promoting that idea, hmm. which was a book that's basically like... Uh, positive uh, what do you call it there's a lot of power in just like ideating on your goals oh like law of attraction but again this speaks exactly to this current question I think because it's 
yeah, if you're some person living at the poverty line and you can't get a job and like you have health issues and you can't get health care, the problem isn't that you're not thinking positively about your goals, right? Mm. But if you're yeah. someone with like, maybe you have stability and some level of uh, economic comfort, but you still live a very unhappy life, there's a lot of self-help stuff for you that isn't about, I just need to survive or have some savings. It is more about uh, strategies for like, how do you have a more fulfilling life? And I feel like Oprah is talking to those people, not mm -hmm. people, not the disturbing number of Americans who are living paycheck to paycheck, let's say. Yeah. And I guess like we tried to find the context of the interview because if she had been asked at it through that lens, then yeah, we would, I'd be fucking mad at her for like her pivoting to like social media as the problem. You know what I mean? Cause like that is a problem. It is not the only problem for why people are arguably more unhappy um, today. It's funny that the, the response though, if you look at the comments on these TikToks criticizing her, they're like, no, Oprah, the reason you're happy is you have money. When the purpose of her book or her argument is that material success actually doesn't make people happy. Mm -hmm. which I think is true, coming from a very true place. A yeah, lot of, there's a lot also... of successful people who are, are not happy. I know, but people don't want to hear that. Well, I know just because they don't want to hear it doesn't mean it's right. I know, but like I, I understand both arguments. I absolutely get that like w if you don't have any money to be able to afford rent, then yeah, just having that met that need met will take a load off that you can even entertain the idea of being happy kind of what i was saying earlier mm -hmm. so like it's like a huge burden to have that at all and for those who don't have that burden yeah i'm not saying that they're therefore they are happy but it's one thing they don't have to worry about that could impede the ability to get to that stage of happiness it's like they don't have that roadblock that doesn't mean like there's a whole bunch of other reasons they can be unhappy, you know, but I, f I find that it is, I understand why it's, why people in the, f the former category are more upset at anyone who's in that latter category for just like being unhappy when they don't, uh, quote, have to be, you know, because they don't have those, those, um, those barriers yeah, that like would definitely make you struggle. Getting mad at Oprah isn't going to make you happy either. I know. But this, that's just people want to direct anger at something. Yeah. So it's easy to direct it at someone like Oprah when there's that one sentence taken from an interview clip and then you can make TikTok reactions about it. Like this is just kind of another part of this is something that does happen on social media. Kind of ironically, she was talking about social media, making people feel bad. This mm -hmm. is one way that some people can use social media to make themselves feel good. I imagine it made the person who made that, it, there was like a viral TikTok about this, reacting and like putting a green screen over top of her, makes people feel good to see that there's people on their side who are criticizing mm -hmm. Oprah and saying, how dare she? She's out of touch. So it's, you're yeah. kind of just like using the machine. But, but like one day those, the, the Zoomers making these TikToks about how evil Oprah is, one day some of them are going to have money. And are they just going to be? And the they're going to be on. They're going to be called out on social media <laughs> for doing this eight years ago. At least some. They're not going to have Oprah money. Not many people will have Oprah money. Yeah. But uh, I, I do think there is actually something meaningful and true and important about this point that um, these materialistic goals you might have in your mind aren't the key to happiness. And I think I used to think about life this way a little bit. Like, oh man, I'll be really happy once I have a nice house or a nice car or this or that. And I realize it comes from a place of privilege of like learning that that isn't true, but mm -hmm. it, I just want people to know it is true. I think it takes a, you'd have to be, a, there's something like fun about having nice things. It's comfortable, but it's not what is going to actually make you feel happy in a more meaningful way. I think like that is true advice. However, people will still come away with it with like a well that's easy for you to say attitude which yeah. I completely understand so I feel like sometimes as a fortunate rich person that I don't even want to give that advice like it's I just don't want to comment 
because I don't want people to walk away with bad feelings, which are, which wouldn't have been intentional, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's like, not that I'm Oprah, relax, <laughs> but like, do you know what I mean? Like if, well, if you do Oprah, like bread, I, I do. Well, not really, actually. I don't like bread. <laughs> I don't, you like, don't bread. like bread. <laughs> no, I well, you're not bread. Oprah at all. No. Um, but what was I saying? I just like, I am sensitive to the realities that people express and I yeah. feel like it's valid for them to be angry. And so I don't want to be part of the reason that people are screaming at me, you know, like, or, or just like rich people in general. Cause yeah, like, yeah, I, I'm also don't want to, I never brag about that or really try and uh, raise it, but I also want to be honest and transparent. So sometimes I feel like I deliberately just don't talk about it or mm -hmm. acknowledge it because I don't want people to have negative feelings. And I want to express that I understand the pain and anger about how it might feel when you see like a rich person, like why people are mad at Oprah, for example, say something like, well, that's not it, Oprah, like you just don't get it. And so I, I understand where that anger is coming from. And I empathize mm -hmm. with it. I guess both things can be true. She can be out of touch and tone deaf. Mm -hmm. for not recognizing like a lot of really fundamental uh, material conditions for why people are not just but unhappy. Is it fair to say that she doesn't recognize that just because that one social media answer, which I tried to watch the whole interview and they were talking about social media before she answered and that question. And she was specifically asked about social media. But yeah. I, I guess the... Like if you asked her specifically though about like wealth inequality in America, would her answer be it's social media's fault? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. But I just like, I, I'm making an assumption. I don't know. But I did see more of that interview and thought like, oh, the, her response was actually in context to a social media mm -hmm. conversation because that's what they were talking about leading up to. But that's not what you see on TikTok because people want to talk about that one line and I get it. They're, they're still anger about that one line in isolation. Sorry, did I cut you off from saying something? No, no. You look like you were going to say something. I was going to make a joke about Oprah setting Hawaii on fire, but I thought that would be distasteful. <laughs> I think people are mad at Oprah because... Uh... <laughs> did you see? That's like, there a were, conspiracy there were theory, conspiracy just to be clear. That, that Oprah started the fires? Did you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are upset. Did that like... start on TikTok? Maybe I, TikTok I just Maybe. doesn't like Oprah. TikTok doesn't like a lot of people. <laughs> TikTok yeah. seems like a pretty angry platform. Is that just a reflection of younger generation? You can say that about any platform, generation? honestly. I don't, it's not just a TikTok thing, but TikTok has a lot of reach. So like, that's probably objectively true, you know? And it reaches more younger people who are more vocal, maybe, um, versus <laughs> like Facebook millennials. Maybe it's a, not that they're not vocal, but it's just like, it's done differently. It's done differently, I think. It's done differently. People are angry on every social media platform because the anger is I everywhere in true. the world. It's an unhappy place here. Just ask Oprah. Seems like people are really angry. <laughs> we should ask Oprah what she thinks. But when I, I like walk down the street and yeah. talk to someone about bread. When have you done that? Sometimes I talk to strangers. Okay. And they don't seem that angry. Yeah, but we live in a quaint place. So I, I get it. Like, yeah, I don't really experience that on the daily either if we go to a tea store or something. Like, people are just kind of chill. But that doesn't mean they're they're totally happy either, you know. I think there's, like, a bit of an attitude difference in what people present to other people depending on your region or location and just generally, you know, what type of, of social situation or space you're in. It can yeah. vary a lot. I just, how many people would be not expressing anger in the same way if they weren't just operating in certain spaces like social media? Mm. The, 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 the Facebook mom posting crazy conspiracy theories. If she doesn't have Facebook, is she going to the grocery store and, and telling the cashier that Oprah lit a Hawaii on fire? Maybe. Or is she just not <laughs> expressing those thoughts? No, I think she's just expressing them in, with her, her, knitting, her knitting club. The babysitting club, like her friends on the block. Yeah, like it's just different spaces to express it in. I'm not convinced that's true. Sometimes really? I think the medium is actually a big part of the problem. I mean, the, the media or the medium through social media, like definitely result in more people learning all these different things more. And they maybe would have never had this thought if they only, their only social interaction was those different clubs and groups in their neighborhood. Yeah, if I didn't see a 20 second clip of Oprah out of context, that made me think she didn't care about poor people. I'm not angry about it. 
So ignorance is bliss. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, it's no, not no. really ignorance either. It's it's just I do think a lot of clips on TikTok and so on are. I just mean people should be selective. mindful. Like, are you being fed a media diet of stuff that's just making you angry because mm. that's capturing your attention? Yeah, but that's what we thrive on. Unfortunately, uh, we, we we as like humans as or humans, you and I. No humans yeah. like. Whenever something, oh, like what happened there? That's bad. They did what? Like we want to learn more. Yeah, yeah. And we're all susceptible to that. There's a reason why that gets served to people. But uh, Mm -hmm. you can fight. Knowing is half the battle. So just ignore it. (laughs) Is that what you're saying? Just ignore it. Ignore Oprah. You don't need to worry about what Oprah thinks. Uh, Just like vote. Be civically, civic engagement or something. I mean, that's, that's not a simple answer. I don't have the answer for, you know, the Oprah's, uh, it's, w- what she's missing. I know the secret. What? Positive thinking. I don't think that's true either. <laughs> I think that's kind of bullshit. But <laughs> All right, ask me something. Are aliens real, Christine? Good Lord. Um, <laughs> no. Like probably, right? I you don't, don't think so? Here, Okay. I will never say definitively no, because I don't fucking know. But for, for <laughs> like, I don't study this. Yeah. And I know that I don't study this and I'm, I'm not in the know. But I don't, like, care enough, you to, don't care enough to make it a huge part of my intellectual investment to explore whether or not it could be true. Okay, so you're not invested. Like, you no. don't want it to be true or not true. It wouldn't shatter your I think your I'd rather view. it not be true. Really? If I could choose. Yeah, just keep things simple. It's just it's, it's complicated if it's true. It would be a little complicated. But like, like, I'd rather it just I like mean, not be true. Are, are you imagining like uh, other beings that could visit Earth? Or is it just like, oh, there's bacteria on Mars? It, yeah, I think it's the latter. Yeah, but th- that doesn't worry you, right? No, not really. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's... But again, like, I'm not a scientist of aliens, so, like, I'm speaking from a place of just, like, a lay person. I don't fucking know anything I don't know if anyone's a scientist of aliens. But some people act like they are. Like, they, like, (laughs) fucking read the theories, and they provide all this evidence from, like, the government unsealed document from 1952, or, like, whatever. I don't know. There are people who present themselves uh, as experts on this topic. And I just, like, it's not for me to care that much to (laughs) go off tangents and, like, make cases of about it i don't know it's just like, like not, not what i'm interested shit in to do i can't sit around imagining if aliens are real yeah and <laughs> i kind of don't want it to be true either yeah. like i just think we're better off without kind of spending our time and energy on that what's more likely that aliens have abducted humans or sasquatch bigfoot is real probably the latter because it's just like a different type of bear <laughs> Yeah, right? like, I, I feel like that of. could evolve and maybe actually yeah. become true if it's not true already. So do you believe in Bigfoot? No. Do you I want don't. it to be true? No. You didn't answer the question. Are people going to shit on me for like not caring about Why the reality of about, aliens? I'm, I don't know. I'm insecure about my opinion apparently. about whether aliens are true. Someone will say like, oh, Christine, you're you're not curious at all. You're such a... A plain we, Jane. This is why we shouldn't do the podcast anymore. I don't care. Like, okay, wh- we're just what having a conversation think? here. Just tell me then. Are aliens real? I think it's more likely than not that somewhere in the universe there's some form of life, yes. Some form of life. But that form yeah. of life could be like a tiny thing we can barely see with our eyes that is pretty insignificant. Yeah, but I, I feel like if it's that low a bar we're talking about, I think somewhere else in the universe there's the conditions on which life could have formed from something. And does it have any impact on us? Because if we'll never see it or communicate or touch it or know it ever, then is it real? Probably not in our lifetime. And I don't know if humans will ever make it to the place of uh, inter traveling outside of solar systems before Mm. we all blow each other up or something. Yeah, good point. All right, ask (laughs) me something else. Do either of you miss working for the government? Mm. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. I I do. I like my job. I mean, I don't regret my decision Mm -hmm. at all. Man, I'm allergic to cats today. Um, And uh, she loves your decision. uh, Yeah. The cats have gotten used to us being home. Yeah. Is that a good thing? 
Yeah. Yeah. You can spend more time with them. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Is this a sensitive topic for you? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We don't have to talk about it. I mean, I'll just give the the easiest to digest answer, okay. which is that bread. He, uh, I love bread. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I I do miss it. I think, unfortunately, for me, COVID and just the evolution of how people work changed what work is like for the type of job I was doing, anyways, and that's out of my control, obviously. Mm-hmm. So. It make like I do miss working pre COVID because I really liked the culture and going into the physical office and feeling like the part of, you know, um, that culture in real life and contributing to the type of work that we were doing, which was crime statistics analyst and analyzing. <laughs> and it's just very different from what I do today. That doesn't mean I don't like love all the different things we do today, but there is a part of me that because I spent like seven years in school, somewhat related to what I was doing Mm -hmm. at work in crime stats, I do feel like I spent so long of my life doing and getting to know that and being good at it and liking like the outputs of my reports and knowing that like policymakers or uh, uh, like student academics, student academics yeah. would be citing my papers or just feeling like the type of work had a certain value to some extent in society in a different way than my work does today. It, uh, it just like I, I do miss that and miss contributing to that. But I don't want to also make it seem like I'm not grateful for You're the success I have in a very different form. so worried about people. I don't think just you're being honest and it's true. And I like it's a good problem to have. You had this amazing business yeah. opportunity and you had a more normal job you loved and you couldn't do both forever. Except I was doing both for like four years. And it was not a healthy lifestyle. I think we can... But the the reason why things changed more for me was because of COVID. Because COVID kind of took away a lot of what I personally really enjoyed. The prospect of like of you could continue government job office. working from yeah. home. And, yeah. and now like everyone in my department basically works from home. Which is like when that happened I and we were still working, uh, I found it incredibly hard to work from home. When yeah. like the whole point is like I get to detach from simply stuff and go to work with all these people working together in one space on crime stats and that like when that wasn't a thing and it still isn't a thing it just feels like that part of the job is was kind of died anyways whether or not i actually formally left it just like wasn't a possibility which i'm not trying to knock on people who really enjoy working from home i totally understand the value of people especially those with families and the commute time like totally get yeah, it yeah. but i am like in a very small <laughs> percentage of people uh, after like so they did studies on this and did surveys who actually would prefer to go into the office and it's just not the same when other people have chosen not to cuz then even if you choose to go in if it's made available and your team just isn't there, then you're just on a Zoom call. So it's like, then why are you there? So that's just like personally kind of made me not um, as happy to do it. And I'm lucky enough that I I didn't have to. Sometimes I forget like it's not that long we haven't still been doing that, right? Like yeah, I left in what, 2021? Technically, I it was less than a year ago that I stopped. That you made the decision to actually. But I'd taken yeah. like time off, honestly. Yeah. Um, like unpaid time just to, you know, think about that decision. Mm-hmm. And then when after my dad died too, I also just like couldn't, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, just like a lot of circumstances and things have changed and it just like wasn't the work place that I really enjoyed, but I do miss it. It's just like could never be that way again, even if I wanted it to be. So it wasn't really, it was my decision, but it also like kind of just unfolded in a way that kind of made the decision for me. Yeah, I get that that If that makes sense. Yeah. Ask me something. (laughs) 
Why is education so important to you both? Hmm. You've inspired me to go on so much. 2024. Smiley face. A positive question, Thanks, Ben. Charlie. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Why is it important to us, Christine? It's been a while since we talked about this yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, education has always been important to me because I felt like I was doing counterculture in a way. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't the only reason. Education has always been important to me as an individual, but as mm -hmm. an influencer, and you saw that education was important to me because I was talking about it to a platform, came more as a product of doing like the opposite of what I was observing from some of the larger, more popular YouTubers who in the 2017 era of content would routinely like shit on school, like make up diss tracks about their teachers or make back to school hacks. That's like how to cheat on your test. Cause like fuck studying. Like yeah. I just, I did parodies and stuff to like make it funny and entertaining, but I ultimately, yeah, did have a message that I didn't really like that that's how we were trying to teach young people to think about school, like to not care, to have like, to just say, fuck it, it's all useless. And while I don't mean to suggest that every curriculum and teacher is perfect, yeah. <laughs> there's obviously improvements in the education system. I think tuition costs in America are fucking stupid. And there's a lot that I wish would change to make education accessible and affordable and more valuable to everyone and contribute to the type of role and job that they are interested in pursuing after school. So I do think like there's a lot that could change too, but I just really didn't think it was productive or helpful or inspiring to just be like, fuck school and that's it. So, yeah, I did a lot of um, promoting education, I guess, just to, like, give you something else to consider. Like, maybe consider yeah. this. And there were – there's always people who – and in the, the comments, too, um, for when we asked you guys questions, like, people saying they literally looked into crime stats or they went into sociology. I, there was a few of these submitted that says, mm -hmm. I literally got my master's in sociology because I heard you took it. And then I looked into it and found something about it that yeah. I like. And I find that's so cool. And one huge rewarding thing about what I do is even though I'm not like an education influencer, like I'm a, I'm a nail person, you know, <laughs> but just these little nuggets of things that I wanted to share with people seem to really inspire people or motivate them or make them mm -hmm. think like, yeah, like she seems like a cool, normal person who is also like cool school can be cool too <laughs> like yeah. it's not all lame and that makes you happy it's not having it money it's that you okay. feel like you had a positive influence on other people's life yes however i'm also extremely <laughs> so, fortunate however. that i first of all canadian tuition is far less than america on average i also had help and assistance to be able to go to school so um yeah 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 so I'm just like the fact that I was able to get this is also why I think some people were upset with me for promoting school is mm -hmm. because they saw it as privileged to say like uh, go to school and like I never really would go into diatribes about the cost of education, which isn't like totally true. I definitely acknowledged how fucking stupid tuition can be, especially in America. But I but yeah, like people would criticize me for promoting school because they're like, well, I school's not for everyone. Therefore, you shouldn't say that school is good. Yeah, the, the school's not for everyone uh, argument. Or, is, is true. I never disagreed with that. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think, like, has my position changed on it all in the last few years? Because I just think, generally speaking, most people, we would, in an ideal society, having post-secondary education accessible to most people would be a good thing, mm -hmm. even if it's not for a very practical outcome. I think it's a little crazy that you have like 18 year olds graduating high school and they're expected to like know what to do yeah. with their life. So I just think like continuing your education, whether that means attending a formal university, I believe some people are self-motivated enough that they can continue their education journey outside of these institutions potentially. And some people maybe, hey, just really know what they love doing. Uh, at a young age or have a family business they're going to participate in or you know there's a lot of fulfilling jobs you can have that don't require a degree as well yep also so true i think all of these things can be true but you can still advocate for people continuing their education and that generally being a good people for a pretty substantial proportion of people i think they should pay people to go to school like they do in is it norway i can't remember 
one of the Scandinavian countries. I mean, you, you'd you, think you literally a... get like a credit back or you get paid. Well, a lot of universities are are at least partially publicly funded, even if they still are expensive to attend. Yeah, but they should pay you for completing your semester. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose government pays for a lot of stuff. Why not? Why not that? It, that that's how it is. Someone will know. I think it's Norway where they you literally get like, uh, I don't know if it's technically a tax credit or just like an income slip, but you will get paid to go to post-secondary. It's not like, uh, you know, like a ton of money or anything, it's but it's Oprah like something. Money. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I know that okay. it requires an entire reconstruction of North American society, <laughs> but like, I just think that that logic is just so inspirational when I hear about how countries do things like that. Because like, I wish... We were structured more like that, where you could feel like going to school isn't a burden or it's like totally inaccessible because of, of money. I yeah. wish that it was like, oh, you get a little bit of a reward for doing that. Like, why not? And if it's not for you, like you don't have to do that. There's other vocational things you can go into. But I, I just like think flipping it on its head like that instead of drastically charging people to learn to like maybe cross your fingers you get a better paying job when you're out if you're able to pay off your student loans i just like think that system is is not yeah a good and setup. i don't think we're blind to like there are problems with universities as institutions and why they have become so expensive mm -hmm. and like how much of that expense is just like prestige going for like to ivy like, league or something or like going yeah. to administrators and mm. not actually to just like the quality of your education necessarily yeah like yeah. people got mad when they had to pay the same tuition rates when it was covid and you couldn't actually go to class mm -hmm. yeah i remember that's that. a big argument yeah mm -hmm. ask me something else how often do you go outside <laughs> To walk or see the sun, Christine. Well, I'm a vampire, so when I go outside, I burst into flames. <laughs> I need to go outside at least once a day, or I feel like... Are you like, like a dog? I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I need to be walked every morning, or I feel like my day never really started. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean, but I don't experience that. Yes. Yeah. I don't need to go outside <laughs> or look outside. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just happy in my my dark spaces. <laughs> You're happy inside. Yeah. You're an indoor I'm an cat. indoor cat, basically. <laughs> I'm I'm menchy. Yeah, I just feel... However, when I do go outside and we take like a walk, it does kind of feel nice. Yeah. But it's I nice just, to go outside. It's like I forget about it and then I don't need to do it every day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the answer to your question for me is probably like twice a week I go outside. No, you go outside more than that. Really? Yeah. I don't think so. I, I think so. Three times a week? <laughs> okay. Next question. <laughs> uh, how many people are asking you if you're getting married or having a baby? Uh, we included this question so we didn't have to include all the questions asking us. Even when did you after get married? all this time, you still get a lot of that? Yes. Way less of it than you did back. Yes, but that's just, uh, pro I'd say it's still proportional to the number of people saying things to me. Oh, mm. but like if you had a viral video on YouTube in 2017 and you were getting like 100,000 comments. Correct. You yeah. know, 5% of those comments being like, when are you getting married? Yeah. Was a lot. It's still 5%. Oh, okay. If that's the number. Just know. the raw number It's has just gone like down. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I, I don't live in my real life in a group or family well you don't even leave the house apparently yeah. who's <laughs> just who's twice a week who's asking you if you're <laughs> but like i don't have that upbringing or experience and people would say that's really fortunate that i didn't have to grow up with like incessant comments about this like when i like i'm not saying no one asked me ever but no one like was annoying about it <laughs> or like mm. acted like we weren't good enough you know like that kind of attitude um no one really did that I don't know. Coworkers never did that. A lot of people I know, like they're together, not married. I never think to be like, why aren't you married? Like we just in the social circles in real life aren't like that. The internet is a totally different experience. Well, it's because these people, I assume the people asking this are within a context where they just assume that is the default thing. Because in their social circles, in their real life, people do behave like that. And it, it would be abnormal not to exactly follow that life path. So I acknowledge that like you were just socialized like this and you probably ask your friends and they ask you the same question. Um, but like, I'm not socialized like that. And I'm, 
I, from my perspective, it's kind of rude, weird, and annoying <laughs> to like say that to other people. The same question as having a baby, which is which is worse, honestly, mm. to ask women uh, when they're having a kid or when you guys plan on starting a family. We've talked about this before on the podcast when I had my sister on yeah. about how you should really never ask that because you never know what someone is going through if they're unable to have children Mm -hmm. If, um, you know, there was a trauma in their past related to that, if they don't want children and they don't want to have to explain it to you, if they can't have children, I feel like this is something we need to collectively remove from our discussion points of small talk or whether it's long talk or small talk, just take it out, (laughs) take it out. Unless it's like, I'm not saying... Uh, never say that ever. Like, obviously, there's contexts where, like, maybe it's your best friend it's and you've been talking you have an about raising your family. Then, like, yeah, obviously, yeah. like, use your own discretion, but don't use this as like a conversation starter. Like, that's fucking weird it and is rude. Very yeah. strange as like yeah. small talk. Mm-hmm. Yes, but if you've been like, let's say I've like dated you for three years, and I'm like. I didn't know you didn't want kids. Well, if you're talking to me, that's different yeah. because the the people in the relationship can have <laughs> they should have that conversation. You probably should have. That but like other people outside, like it's not really. It is a, weird yeah. how just like a stranger will just like ask someone. That. It is weird, but they don't think it's weird. That's what I find so interesting about like decorum and just things like why people think like it's normal to just go up to someone. Or on the internet is the equivalent to just going up to someone and no, be like, they, when they are you having feel, a baby? They feel a connection to you more than like a stranger, I think. That might partially explain it's it. It's just the parasocial of it. Yeah. A and I, bit, I see yeah. this trend where like, if even if you see like a couple on YouTube get engaged and they like announce their engagement on YouTube, everyone is fucking like, when's okay, the baby? when's the baby coming? And then they never shut the fuck up about that. And I find that that's I'm probably really hard. For people who've put their relationship online to mm-hmm. have to, to watch that. I know it's easy for me to say this as the, the not woman in the relationship, but I find it easy to like disregard this in the sense that I don't think these people are coming from a disrespectful or mean place. I think it's more I of know. a, I'm happy for you. I think this is something that like I ascribe value to and I just want it for you even if it's like a bit ignorant or annoying or inappropriate i I don't think it's coming from a bad place i understand that the commenter doesn't intend to make me feel bad because i'm not married or make me feel incomplete Mm -hmm. because i don't want or i'm not having children i understand they don't intend to do that i still think their behavior though is a reflection of a societal soiling that we kind of all collectively society pooped its pants basically and it like i could smell it (laughs) and and i that's why it bothers me i know it's not the individual i just think it's like a broader symptom of how we're so fixated on like making people feel like they need to do these specific steps and if someone is trying to do one of those steps and it's not happening you just really fucking hurt them even if you didn't mean to. Yeah. Yeah, well put. No smellies. Ask me something. What is the worst unethical or low quality piece of media that you delight in consuming? Mm, Love Island. <laughs> is it Love Island? <laughs> That's the reason one. We have been trash. watching Love Island lately. Yeah. It Tell probably them. is trashy dating shows. Yeah. If we're t- I don't know if it's unethical. It's like a voyeuristic and... I, don't, I could come I up with reasons why it's unethical. More unethical than true crime, which we also sometimes watch. I don't think this is a competition, but well, I think Well, it's what could... is the worst piece of media you watch. It is a competition. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, you could, you could uh, identify elements of each about why they're questionable, yeah. I think. Is it worse to exploit the romantic lives of... Young beautiful people. looking 25 year olds or uh make entertaining content over people's real victimization i don't think it's a competition i think you can i think there's learn no competition. maladaptive uh behaviors from either or not just behaviors but Maladaptive. just like like different thought like from love island i think some of the stuff i see and what the editors how they choose to cut it or the reactions between people and how people treat each other on the show 
um, isn't always like a good learning experience. I actually think yeah, this like, isn't an educational well, I know. show and they don't care about educating people. But like to to the outsider, they're presenting it as like, this is just young people. This is how young people date. This is how young people treat each other. And it is kind of like sad, I guess. I don't know whether they're editing it to make it look worse or it, because it's just has to be pared down. So it feels like it's devoid of more context. But yeah, I don't think it's ultimately good to for young people to watch this as a presentation of young people dating. Because I think a lot of this shit's kind of hurtful. Are you overthinking? Like, I don't Probably. think most people think of it as a representation of... Yeah, I know it's dumb trash. That's why I said I just watched the dumb trash. <laughs> but like, I think it's like not really that... I don't like the lessons that come from it, but I'm also not expecting lessons, so I don't really care. You yes. asked. <laughs> you asked me something, <laughs> so I answered. Okay. Okay. Ask me something. If you could make one law, what would it be? Uh, I don't have one. Make like uh, the top marginal tax rate like 75%. Oh, I would make it um, illegal to have to pay for health care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how laws work, but I appreciate where you're coming to charge, from. Sorry, that's, I worded it wrong. <laughs> Like, you cannot charge. I would make healthcare. it illegal to have as much money as Oprah. <laughs> what would she do? Would she have to go to jail? Oh, you go to jail when you reach a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. Uh, just a few more here. Uh, do you think the nail community is better or worse than when you started? And in what way? The nail community. It's like the beauty community, but nail. Um, yeah. Is it? You know, I honestly don't know and feel like I couldn't genuinely say like yes or no uh, because like a... I'm in a different spot today than I was seven years ago when I was very much like in the weeds talking to other creators on a, a small creator to small creator level. So because that's not what I am today, I'm not in those conversations. So I don't have visibility. But like... All of that, yes, like if we acknowledge all that's true and just accept where I, the position difference, I think seven years ago there was a lot of cattiness that I do recall where people were constantly talking shit about other nail artists and, I don't know, making fake accounts to like write mean shit on other people's. I definitely mm -hmm. witnessed that, uh, some backstabbing, <laughs> like, like a lot of that. Um, um, and today... I don't know if that's going. I haven't seen that go on, but I also maybe am not participating in certain discussion forums that I know breed that kind of conversation or negativity. So I'm not even looking in those spaces. Yeah. So if you're in the nail community, like you let me know in the comments, <laughs> like if you think or you think uh, the, what I just described from my experience seven years ago, is that your experience today? Is that like an inevitable experience in every community? all the time or has the nail community changed? I think one thing that is more objectively true for everyone is that more nail nail artists are seen as like content creators and entrepreneurs today yeah. than they were seven years ago when it was like literally like your your side job. Like no one, no one treated it as anything And I don't different. think that's unique to like nail art as much as it's yeah. like a lot of artists who might've just been doing stuff as a hobby in 2016 mm -hmm. online are maybe more inclined to think of how they can leverage that into some sort of business opportunity. Oh, a lot of people have have figured out how to monetize their hobbies. And that's a huge trend on TikTok <laughs> where there's like coaches almost that teach you how to monetize your hobby or apply mm. it to your niche. And they show all these trending sounds and how to get more viewers out of this. Or like, here's the things you can do to make money. Here's how to join affiliate oh, programs. But if there's, there's way more teachings about how to do those little things than there was seven years ago. But when they are successful and make money, then TikTok doesn't like them anymore. Well, the smaller content creators <laughs> won't I'm, get I'm, that. I'm being facetious. I know. Yeah. Okay. It, only if you get to like Oprah. Oprah. Well, no, that's not true. Like any any person are with the, a million subscribers are you on YouTube. The is Oprah shit of on. the nail art community. How do you think the nail art community <laughs> thinks of you in 2023? Are you mostly just a representative of a nail polish brand that sometimes engages with nail art creators? Like I, I I'm curious. I don't know. 
-hmm. how a nail art I know there's like not one opinion representative of nail artists mm -hmm. or the nail community, right? But I think I'm people curious are very they... respectful and kind. That's what I've experienced. Like I'll notice people will, uh, I don't know, make a nail art that I Did popularized many years ago, like a reverse reciprocal gradient or something. And then they'll tag me and be like, simply illogical. I've been watching her for years. She's So you're like an OG. Kind of, I Maybe I people guess. think of you as an elder elder states like a name. like an i just seen for iphones but for nails does that <laughs> sure. make sense or is yeah. that too being too nice to myself because she is like literally iconic in that i don't I, know if I, i'm <laughs> I, I i think you're an icon <laughs> you think i'm iconic i think you're an i i think you're okay. iconic anyways <laughs> now i'm uncomfortable um, oh good <laughs> i think the nail community has come a long way i think also volume wise there's probably way more people not that i've like counted but I wouldn't be surprised if there actually is a larger amount of people really? today who are specifically making nail content and with the goal of monetizing it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sounds like an empirical question. Let's do a research study. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ask me something. Is there someone you've had to kick off your PR list? Uh, or less risky, why have you kicked someone off? Oh, someone wants some gossip. Someone wants tea. Um, I, I think there's one we both have. Do <laughs> you want to go there? Um, yeah, we won't name names. It's fine. Um, yes, we did remove someone. But, like, it's not that huge of a deal or dramatic. Like, I'm sure this happens. Other brands decide to remove people for specific reasons. And also, we don't have a PR list where everyone by default gets something all the time. We kind of mm -hmm. mix it up on purpose just to kind of spread it around as opposed to giving it to a fixed number of people forever. So th the word list isn't really exactly yeah. the definition. Um, but there there was someone that we were giving product to somewhat regularly. and uh, Who was selling it. Who was selling it on a third party uh, website for more money also like just for to give you all the context then it was worth before before it was even released yeah like like i they'd gotten it like the day before i guess so when you see things like that that to me is not um well first of all we don't want that to happen <laughs> and if we can control it by not giving them the product then like <laughs> yeah. we'll do that um second of all when we give out pr it's it's always for consideration there's never an expectation that the creator, influencer, nail content person has to show it, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, if they're clearly never, ever using it, and there is no more value, really, in giving it to them, yeah, the brand might decide, okay, like, let me give it to someone who, like, who maybe finds actually, value in yeah. it. So, um, and when I say value, I don't mean them profiting off of it either. <laughs> Because that's like not really what we want to uh, waste our PR on, if I can yeah. use that word. So yeah, we we did remove someone for that reason. But it's also like, I'm not sending them to jail. You know, I'm not calling the police. <laughs> Only like, nail it's jail. It's fine. <laughs> like it's okay. All yeah, right. At the end so of the day, you're it. you're gifting someone something. They're allowed. They can do what they want. They can, with it. but we can just decide not to keep sending PR yeah. and give it to someone else. And you'd hope people would have, you know, a reasonable perception of why that would not be a good thing to do yeah yeah so that's the tea <laughs> <laughs> okay all right last one uh how do you not get burnout asking for a friend aye, aye, aye. i'm asking for you what you're my friend i'm asking how do you not who has get the burnout? answer menchie somebody hello 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 <laughs> how do you not get burnout <laughs> <laughs> okay stop <laughs> how do you not get burnout um i don't know you don't know. I don't know. But I also never really make a point of talking about how hard I'm working or how burnt out I am. Hustle harder. Yeah, because I find that rhetoric boss. annoying. Like, I find it annoying. I always found it annoying, even when it was cool to, you know, say that all the time. Um, but to answer the question, I find it is a struggle because I don't even have the answer to myself. And I feel like it would be disingenuous for me to just sit here and be like, oh, you know, just um, 
once a week, make sure you take a bath and uh, <laughs> drink tea every day and uh, yeah. meditate like once a week. Like, I no, I, I don't have the answer. I think that a lot of this comes down to what type of personality you are. And that's why everyone has a different answer or solution or feels like they've, they're burnt out. Other people feel like they're not burnt out. I think it is just the type of person you are and the conditions under which you can operate before you're just like, I can't do it anymore. So my advice is, is only really applicable to my mind and the way that I operate and am comfortable doing so. And you can't necessarily extrapolate it to yourself. And I find that that's what's so tough about giving advice about how creators can avoid burnout, which is like the number one question that like YouTube will want to talk about when they do panels or whatever. And, and I'll never want to participate in those because I'm just like, I don't fucking have the answer. <laughs> like it's, I don't want to also sit up there and be like, oh, it's a bummer. Like just deal with it or that it come off that way because that's not what I'm trying to do either. Yeah, I think you're you're also answering from the perspective of someone who genuinely loves work and working in the kind of work you've been able to do. But if I say all that, it yeah. will just sound really depressing to anyone who's looking for the relief. And I'm basically indirectly saying like, there isn't one deal with it, which is like not what I want to say either. Well, I think just what you're saying is that you don't have an answer for anyone but yourself. And you're even acknowledging for yourself, that's a work in progress for you. I think mm -hmm. you have a healthier relationship with work today than you did three, four years ago. Because I'm not doing as many big you... things at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that is advice. We've talked about that well, before. Well, I mean, it's a very simple answer, but like working less. If you're someone uh, like you who is like super motivated and when you don't, uh, if just left to your own devices, you will just work all the time. And I think just like even <laughs> just like. The very simple answer is, how do you not get burned out? You don't work as much if you're in a position where you have that flexibility. We gave this advice once, and now I'm remembering it, and I do actually think it's valuable, that it depends how many large projects you're doing. Because if you are spreading yourself too thin by, like, I'll just use this as an example because it's the only thing I have. Is like if I'm working for the government trying to write papers, mm -hmm. very important papers, and I'm also trying to run a YouTube channel by myself basically and uh, make videos and post once a week and make sure they're good and engage with the community and comment and have a podcast and run a nail polish brand. How am I going to do those four very important things for four different reasons effectively? Mm -hmm. There comes a point where the number of large projects you have isn't as sustainable anymore. And I kind of think maybe the advice is to map out what those big projects are and consider what of them maybe aren't as valuable to you uh, forever. Like maybe one of them you would actually be better off cutting. And then you can make sure you have the energy and resources to do those other projects mm -hmm. better because you'll dilute your efforts if you're taking on too many big high stakes things. And the the definition of high stakes is going to vary, you know, for you. Everyone thinks no, something. I think it's a good yeah. answer, though, because there's a certain there's there's a certain kind of work you can do in a more I don't want to I don't want to say mindless, but like there's some there's some work things I know you enjoy, like taking photos of nails and stuff that you can do in a way that doesn't More require yeah, yeah it doesn't require you very at a high level thinking mm. actively and strategically uh, at like a more executive level type brain power i think right so yeah i think like obviously you need brain power and uh, critical thinking to manage and direct the like larger tasks that, that you have but it's probably helpful to you to make sure that those tasks also includes some more passive actions because it gives you a bit of a mental break. No one can mm -hmm. work at 100% intellectual capacity all the time. Even if you're like writing your thesis, okay, here, this is actually probably a better example that relates to anyone in school right now. When I was writing my thesis, like obviously it's really fucking hard <laughs> to like come up with like the perfect intro paragraph or like write the, the point that matters. Yeah. So you have to, to dedicate some time to that really hard critical task, but then 
it's kind of a relief when you get to the bibliography and you just have to do the fucking checks. Is it all APA? Okay. I'm going to spend the next three hours making sure this long ass bibliography is APA. It's kind of mindless because mm -hmm. it doesn't take the same amount of the threshold of like, this is high risk brain power I'm using, but it allows you somewhat of a break so that you can uh, recharge the like critical thinking part of your brain to then go back to your thesis statement. Yeah. So whatever number of tasks you decide, like big things are appropriate for you, each of them should accommodate a little bit of that more passive effort because that is a chance for you, I think, to just relax even though you're still supporting your overall task mission or productivity. I think it's very telling that your answer is about how like prioritizing different types of work and not like how to not let work become Every yeah, and I, I totally life. see people pointing out flaws with my answer because I basically said just find different types of work that has uh, less mind <laughs> yeah. power, but it's still work. But like, I'm t I'm just not gonna bullshit you and tell you to take a bath once a week. I don't know if that <laughs> if that helps you, then yeah. then you know that. But like, I can't tell you I what think, activities. I'll, are good I'll say for it you. again, organically over time, I appreciate that. I feel like you've gotten a little healthier in terms of like not staying up till all hours yeah, of the night Yeah, I don't working. do that anymore, so that's good. So, like, that's one rule that, like, I don't think you just decided, like, oh, I'm going to have a rule now where I, I'm i in bed by midnight or 1 a.m. I think that just sort of happened, and I think it's better that that's happening. Yeah, but that's just a product of, like, when we used to work for the government, you were gone for eight hours, so you feel like you didn't well, have any time to do to allocate the, uh, to the other, other stuff. So, like, you have to stay up till 2 in the morning. Yeah. in order to like actually get anything meaningful done mm -hmm. whereas yeah now that i don't have that i don't have to stay up i don't have to pull all-nighters uh which is good but yes i am just honestly like working the entire rest of the day and night um but i don't have to stay up till two i can go to bed at midnight and eventually fall asleep at two because i can't sleep <laughs> can we watch love island <laughs> we need that trash and i guess it's not burnout if you enjoy what you're doing but maybe you should leave the house a little bit more. More than twice a week. Maybe, okay, I'll work maybe. on that. Maybe this week. Let's go for you a walk after this. You leave the house more than twice a week. Do I? Are you just saying that to protect me? Honestly, like, don't know. <laughs> what is leaving the house? Like, if we just go to pick up mail or something, does that count as leaving the house? Yeah. If I'm just in a car and then I come right back? <laughs> that barely counts. Does that count? Like, that's what I want. What's the definition of leaving the house? Just walking outside for two seconds and that's it? <laughs> yes, opening a window. Okay. Then it's definitely more than twice Sticking a week. your head out the window counts. <laughs> Smelling fresh air. <laughs> All right. Thanks for asking us things. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. I, I appreciate the inquisitive and kind questions and will ignore all the ones about marriage and babies. <laughs> still, to this day, it will never end. We'll be like 74 years old on YouTube and still getting those questions. And we'll be like, literally, when are you going to drop it? <laughs> You know, old lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope you have a wonderful Taco Tuesday. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Bye. Thank you.